Hi, I'm Candace Stringham, Marketing Director at My Mind's Eye, and today we're going to be talking all about how to decorate your mantle using our Halloween party line. Today we're filming at the home of Paper Bandit Press, which is actually my parents' house, and my mom and I love to decorate together, so you're going to see Kim Borup kind of in and out of these clips with me, and that's probably my first suggestion for decorating your mantle. It's always really helpful to have a second pair of eyes to kind of tell you if you're making the right decisions or not as you go along, and it's a lot more fun, so bring someone along with you as you decorate your own home for Halloween. We're going to start out by talking a little bit about layering the different product and creating height levels. Those are two really important things as you're decorating a mantle. So as you can see, we've done quite a bit of that here in this mantle. We've layered all of the different garlands to kind of give a unique drape to the front of the mantle. Um, and we've used two of our stripes, two of our circles. These are actually circle garlands that we've scalloped by just folding them in half. And then one of my favorite pieces, which are these vintage pumpkins. Um, we did this completely symmetrical because each of the patterns are a little bit busy. So to simplify it, that symmetry kind of rests the eye, calms the eye, um, and the patterns work individually that way. I love a little bit of asymmetry, and that can be really fun. So if you're just using one or two garlands, you may want to drape them a little bit separately to one side or the other. But again, in this case, because we have so much pattern going on, we wanted to give it that symmetry so that it gives the eye something comfortable with all the pattern. The next thing I want to talk about is layering our party fans. So you can see it creates a really dynamic, really beautiful look with the different layers and the different patterns. And it's so easy and so simple to do. It comes in a box just like this. And we've only used two boxes here to create this huge mantlescape. Um, we can also add the pumpkins that come with it. We didn't in this case, just because again, we had so much going on already, um, but they're adorable and I love adding those as well. All you have to do is open up the box fold the fan, branch it out, and then paper clip it. And that's one of my favorite things about this product is you can seal it with the adhesive if you like, but you can also just paper clip them so that at the end of Halloween, at the end of October, I can take all of these down, unpaper clip them, put them right back in the box, and then use them again next year for my decorating. I feel like that's super handy and really easy to store when it's all together in the box. So. What we did here is just layer the different patterns and sizes on top of each other. And then over that, we've used our glittered Happy Halloween banner across the top. The easiest way to put these up on your wall is by using just the 3M com or command hooks. Uh, they'll come off the wall. They're really easy and you can't really see them. They sort of blend in. So you can use clear or white depending on what your wall color is. And it's super helpful for giving you a really beautiful look, but you know, no tape is showing anywhere. So that's really nice. Before we layered those and used the command hooks, we actually used painter's tape to put them in place. And the reason we did that is it makes it really easy to move them around. If something doesn't look quite right, all you have to do is undo the painter's tape. And then we use the command hooks in the final step. Um, so that's just a little simple tip, painter's tape, it's really great, won't take the paint off your wall, but helps you in placement as you're layering everything and deciding where everything should go. So our first step again was putting the banners up. The second was to layer the fans with our Happy Halloween banner on top, and then we had to create our mantlescape. So this is where height becomes really important. You don't want everything just to be straight across your mantle at the same height level because the eye will just sort of rest and not find a lot of interest. So we want to create different height levels to create interest for the viewers looking at the mantle. And you can do that several different ways. You can see in this process we've used uh, tickets that we just bought from a party supply store in orange. We've used cake plates and cupcake stands to also create some height levels. And we've also used old vintage books, which you can find for just a few dollars or even a few cents at vintage shops um, or places like Goodwill. Um, and that's something that I'm always looking out for, a great vintage book, because they're so inexpensive and they're really great at creating different height levels. 
Um, and depending on the colors you, can, you get, you can use them for Halloween or Christmas or anything else. Um, so that's how we created the different height levels. We've added in some of our standing art to give it a little bit of height. Um, you can see we have one up here and also one at the base of the mantle. Um, we've used our party picks in a jar to also create some height. And then this little house, uh, we realized we had an empty spot and we wanted to put something there. So we just ran to a craft store, bought a plain paper mache house, spray painted it black, and then added some of our My Mind's Eye scrapbooking paper to add a little bit of colors in the windows and the doors. You can also see that we've created some layers using different textures. So even though I have all these beautiful banners, adding in just a little bit of fabric gives it a different texture and makes the banner stand out even more. And on top of that, we've then added our paper chains for another texture. We have glitter and polka dots and pattern. So again, layering different types of textures and product can really give it a lot of depth and beauty to your mantlescape. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is not just creating height level on your mantle ledge, but creating height and weight overall. So a lot of times when people are decorating their mantle, they just think about the mantle ledge and what's going to go right there. But you also want to think about what's going above and what's going below. We want to create some weight to ground the entire piece. So instead of just leaving the bottom of our fireplace plain, we added in some of our art and also some pumpkins and a vintage hat to just ground the overall design. And then up at the top, you'll notice that our back, the back of the wall, the fans are layered so that they go all the way down to the mantle ledge. We want there to be some crossover so that it feels connected overall. So again, you want to create something on the base, something on your center ledge, and then something above, and have it all just a little bit overlapping so that it feels like it works together as a composition.